your Bibles quickly and I certainly hope that you've been listening to the radio and know that that's one of the things that I certainly ask people to do is to read say amen I've come to a very serious conclusion and that is that the problem with the church today is the people don't know what's going on People been in church for years and can't even quote two scriptures. Say amen. Most people think that church is anniversaries and chicken dinners. They, they think that's what it means. They think that that's it. When they do that, they think they're working out their soul salvation. I ain't seen what Jesus told you to cook out your soul salvation yet. Say amen. He said, freely you have received. You didn't receive chicken. Freely you give. That means gives what the good, good word of God that you receive. But somewhere along the line, beloved ministers, have, uh, excuse me, brothers, I love you. I think I told you that before, didn't I? But I just want you to know that I love you. But I want you to know we messed up the church. The preachers has messed the church up. Amen. We got it going our way. Say amen. But Jesus rose from the grave and said, I am the way. And if we're going to be in his will, we got to go Jesus' way. 
The church is so mixed up unto the fact that when you preach the gospel nowadays, people think you have to have a certain sound. They think that preaching the gospel has come from a sound. Oh, he sounds like a preacher. Well, what does a preacher sound like? We didn't get no records of what Peter and Paul sound like. They didn't leave no tapes on record. Say amen. And John the Baptist said he was just a voice crying in the wilderness. Say amen. So I don't know what he was doing or how he sound, but whatever he was doing, it was drawing the people. Even Jesus went to his revival and didn't only just go there, got baptized. So he must have been doing something right. Oh, you're not listening to me. But we have these conclusions of what college did he attend? Amen. Praise God. And some of the dumbest people in this world are some that went to college. I'm not against education, but I'm against education when it makes you a fool. And anybody that say that God is not real is a fool. For the Bible said that God, the, the fool have said in his heart, that there is no God. Come on. And that was an educated fool. Because they said that God was dead. But they never showed me where it was buried and I couldn't believe it. Oh, come on. It came from the University, I think, of North Carolina. Where one of the professors discovered that God had died. But he never told me what he died of. I mean, if he died, he must have got sick. Or somebody assassinated him. Say amen. And then after he died, he must have been buried somewhere. And since I am one of the sons, nobody called me and told me to come to the funeral. Say amen. I am a personal part of the family. My brother is named Jesus. My father is God. Jehovah. Amen. And nobody notified me. And my family and I is on speaking terms. It's not like a part of the family on an outcast. I'm yet in speaking terms with my father. My brother talks with me too. So since my father died, they should have let me know. What do you say? So he must be alive. Touch somebody and say he's alive today. And forevermore. Shout hallelujah. We are living in a day now where everything is accepted even in the church. Amen. People now are justifying everything. A preacher can walk off and leave his wife and get another and they justify. Say amen. They can get babies by the members and they justify. Say amen. They can get their daughters, their daughters can get pregnant and they take them off and get abortions and become murderers say amen praise God and they justify all of that say amen they say this is a new day but I want you to know it's no new way Jesus Christ said I am the same yesterday today and forever and our change is not he didn't stop there he said I am the way not W-A-Y-S but I am the W-A-Y I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. And what I like so much about it, he said, no man cometh unto the Father. But by me, he didn't stop there, he said, I am the door. Oh, come on, come on. And if you come in, you got to come by me. And if you come up any other way, you are a thief and a robber. Somebody ought to say hallelujah if you believe it. Say amen. So we're living in a time where the, the ministers that will live right today, they have a big job on their head. They got to come by and behind those devils, those homonging preachers, those cigarette suckers, those cigar suckers, those snuff dippers, those homongers, those fornicators, those homosexuals. Amen. They gotta, we got to come behind them and try to teach people that it's wrong to be a homosexual. It's wrong to divorce your wife. It's wrong to be a fornicator. It's wrong to be an adulteress. The job has been left in our hand. We got a big job to do. Say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The Bible says that they are dumb dogs, too lazy to bark. What you want with a yard dog who lay up on the porch and, and sleep while the robber steal everything you got? Say amen. You pays those devils. You pays those devils to lie to you. They get up there with their sermon, wrote out on a piece of paper. And said, my subjects for next week will be the baby dropped the milk bottle. Oh, child. Our pastor said he going to preach the baby dropped the milk bottle. I'm going to be there. I, now, honey, you know I can't miss. Because my pastor said the baby dropped the milk bottle. What does that have with, to do with salvation? Amen. That's what you have today. Holiness has become just about as bad as anything else. The sisters are fastly getting back into the world. Amen. They, they put a little black pencil over the eyebrows. And if nobody say nothing about that, they make their cheeks rosy. And if nobody say nothing about that, they put on just a little colorist lip gloss. And if you don't say them about the little lip gloss, they put a little blue stuff over. And they're still watching and waiting for you to say something. And if you don't say something, they say nothing about that, they'll say, moles will start developing from all over their face. Their lashes will grow out. Next thing you know, you got Jezebel in the pulpit. With their long earrings on in their beads. And their mouth look like a red light that got stuck, blinking on and on. Hallelujah. But the Bible declares that we should share the very appearance of evil. Now what woman that says she's a woman of God wants to look like a gypsy, a whore, a prostitute. The word of God said, coming out from among them and be ye. If I don't come back no more, it don't matter to me. I don't preach to come back nowhere I go. I preach to go home from there. Say amen. Get your Bibles quickly. We're going to Genesis Genesis, hallelujah. Oh, bless thee, thy name of the Lord. Genesis 19 and 1. Hallelujah. We are living in a day that no preachers want to touch. Most of them know what's going on. But they feel if they touch it, they're going to lose their organist. They feel if they touch it, they're going to lose their, their drama and their, their piano play -o. And they're director of the queer. Say amen. But the Bible said, Cry loud. Spare nobody. The word found me. A drug addict. A drunker. A liar. A homemonger. A fornicator. When the word found me, it straightened me out. It didn't patch me up. God made me all over again. I'm not the same Johnny Washington that I was. People meet me sometimes and say, I've known you, but you don't look like the same one. I say, I'm not. So, oh my God. If you get changed, you're not. You're not the same. When God changed you, you're just not the same. 
Say amen. amen. Maybe the same frame, but it's not the same person living in that frame. Say amen. Genesis 19 and 1. Read. And there came two angels to Sodom. And there came, praise God. I'm going to ask that Brother Thompson read. Brother uh, Barnes is, the devil has attacked his voice. Amen. Amen. Get your Bible. I want you to follow me. Make sure you mark this in your Bible. You'll be discussing this and you'll be discussing with you. Everybody ain't happy about what I'm saying. I'm glad. Say amen. If you get, you get shook up enough, you'll get right. That's the problem. You'll sit comfortable in those stained glass when the churches with their plush seats and the funeral music. After all, we are very dignified, you know. After all, the choir shall sing its anthem. And after the anthem, the next voice that you will be here of that of our dear beloved Pastor Dr. Red Blue. Say amen. Genesis 19 and 1, read. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. There came two angels to Sodom at the evening, the close of the day. Two angels were sent from the Lord to go down to Sodom and warn Lot and Mrs. Lot that there were going to be destruction in the city and that he was going to destroy it. See, God always lets his people know what's going to happen before it happens. See, I'm glad I'm on the inside. See, I mean, you got those that are not saved have to go through red tape to try to find out what we know because we are in the in crowd. Say amen. So God sent the angels down to Sodom at evening time to speak unto his servant who lived in that wicked city. They lived there, he with his family, and Mrs. Lot who had become corrupted. Ms. Lot had been there and she had began to enjoy the things that was going on in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. It had become a cesspool for a city. Amen. And the people were like maggots working in something dead. Because of the fact the state had got up before God and made him sick. And he could not spare Sodom any longer. Sodom was a place that was like Philadelphia and Trenton and New York City and Newark, New Jersey, where the faggots was on parade and the bulldaggers was doing the same. Say amen. It was a place where you could not trust nobody with your son or daughter. You might send your daughter to school, but he come back, she come back a boy. And you send your son to school and he come back a girl. Sodom was just like what's going on today. And the Bible declares as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and Noah's day, so shall it be before the Son of Man appear. And what you see now should let you know that God is on his way back. Say hallelujah. It is no doubt in my mind what we are facing now. Amen. In our church, that teaches holiness from the cradle to the grave. Amen. This week we had a, a case of homosexuality in two girls that I sat on the back seat with their ugly selves. Amen. You do wrong in Tabernacle, you got to sit on the back seat and let everybody look at you with your wrong. I don't run them out of the church. I sit them there. I punish them. You got to sit there. Until, I don't care. You, you can come tell me that I got... I, I, I got forgiven from the Lord. Honey, you got to wait till you, you got to pray for forgiveness from me. Say amen. I'm the one got to look at your nasty face. Say amen. And the Bible said rebuke them openly. The Bible said rebuke them openly that others might see and fear. But if you let that faggot still play the organ and standing in the pulpit, and twiddling up and down the seats and got all the young boys trailing behind him. After a while, you're going to have a manufacturer of little faggots. Say amen. Say amen. But the Bible said that we should cry out against sin. And Sodom was just like it is in these days. Say amen. People who thought they were so high in society, they wanted to know, who am I to judge? You are not judging when you see a rusty, husty, musty man 
laying up in the bed or hanging out with another man and think that he's a woman. That is not being a judge. You shall know the tree by the fruit it bears. You see a big old rusty man tripping along like a woman, you know that is no man. If God get in you, you don't act like that. Don't tell me you saved and still switching your backside like a woman. If God get in your soul, he'll straighten out your hips. Say hallelujah. These are the last days. And the Bible said, cry loud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. If you believe it, shout yeah. yeah. Glory to God. Miss Lot has got all mixed up. She had gotten mixed up and they couldn't, she didn't want to leave Sodom. She was having a good time. Maybe that other man wasn't going to move out of, out of Sodom with his wife and she was entangled with that wife. And God told him, said, now you get out of Sodom and don't even look back. Glory to God. Just keep going. There she was peeping around. Say, come on, honey. Let's go, honey. When God warns you, you better obey. And beloved, you sitting around lukewarm, cold, icy, frosty, and don't know God, you better get yourself together. Don't you know these are the last days? Hallelujah. Well, I'm Baptist. I don't care. You better have the Holy Ghost. God ain't got no Baptist. He got holy people. He ain't got no Catholic. He got holy people. And you can't be a Catholic and be holy. Would you like for me to prove it? You cannot be a Catholic and be holy because you got to deny what they taught you. You got to deny Mary because she can't save nobody. The Bible said there's one mediator between God and man. And his name is Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Not at the name of Mary or Joseph. The Bible said there's no other name under the heaven given among men whereby man can be saved but in the name of Jesus. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. That priest, that pope, that preacher, whosoever that lied to you is in trouble with God. The Bible said it is better that a millstone be about your neck and offend one of my least ones. What do you think going to happen if you cause the least one to go to hell? The Bible said preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Rebuke, reprove with all long suffering. For the time will come when men and women will not endure sound doctrine. These phonies on the radio repeat after me. Loose my money. Loose and you so stupid. You sitting up there tomorrow. Loose. My mind. Writing for blessing plan. If you do not work with the blessing plan, the plan will not work for you. For nothing, from nothing. Don't you know if you saved and sanctified and baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't need no blessing plan. You got the blesser. With good words and fair speech. That's what the Bible says in Romans 16, chapter around the 16th verse. Say, with good words and fair speech, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Simple people will go along with anything. Glory to God. You're too lazy to read. Some of you looking at me now. Don't have a Bible. When you go to these meetings, always take your Bible. Don't take nobody's word, not even Brother Washington's word. You don't take nobody's words. You tra trail behind them. 
The Bible says such the scripture, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and some have testified. See a drunk walking down the street. I'm a Christian. Yeah, I'm a Baptist. I'm a Methodist. If he had such the scripture, he'd find out that God don't have no Methodists, no drunks either. Amen. Read, brother. I think I've taken all the, the word away from you. I'm so excited about you. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot standing in the gates of Sodom at evening. Read. And Lot seeing them rose up to meet them. And he rose up to meet the vis visitors, the angels. Now, mind you, angels are not ladies. Nowhere in the Bible you, you, you look at a woman and she look at you and say, honey, stand up, lady. If your husband walks in and tell you that you look like an angel, you tell him, no, don't tell, don't tell me that. Tell him, say, darling, say, tell me something else because that means I look like a man. <laughs> Angels was warriors. They are warriors. And God has never sent women to do battle. So angels are men. Read that again, brother. Lot seeing them rose up to meet them. Yes. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Listen. And Listen. he said, Behold, now my lords, turn in, I pray you. Come into my home. I, I welcome you into my home. You're welcome to come in. Read. Into your servant's house. Yes. And tarry all night. And you're welcome to spend the night with me. In my house. My house is yours. I desire to make you comfortable. Read. And wash your feet. Yes. That and was a custom in that day. To wash your feet. Because you walked around in the house. On those beautiful mats and rugs. Without any sanders on. Say man. You left your sanders in the outer court. You wash your feet on the outside. Amen. Of the outer court. Now people have used this to keep from. You carrying out the audience of washing one another's feet at communion. They said it was a custom, but that was a custom to wash your feet on the outside. But the custom of washing your feet with communion was done at the supper table. You already inside. So it was not done to make you clean your feet. It was done because Jesus said do it. And nobody's left off the hook that don't do it. The Bible said, if I wash thee not, the 13th chapter of St. John, he said, thou hast no part with me. Well, I don't believe that'll stop me. The Bible said, if I wash thee not, Peter, are you greater than Peter? Peter preached the very first sermon on the day the church was organized. And if it would keep him from making it in, what you think going to do to you? Well, they don't do it in my church. Get out of there. Find a church that is going to do what, what the Bible say do. If they ain't doing what the Bible say do, there's no church no how. The Bible said, my sheep hear my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. Say amen. If somebody come and tell you that it's not necessary to wash feet, you know that that's not of God. So they, were, what, they washed their feet said, wash your feet and come on inside. Read. But the, the, the men didn't want to put them out. Listen to what they said. And he said, behold, now my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. Read on. And tarry all night and wash your feet. Read. And you shall rise up early and go on your way. Keep reading. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Keep reading. And he pressed upon them greatly. To come in. And they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and Read. did bake them unleavened bread, and they did eat. Read. But before they lay down, the men of the city. Listen now. Even the men of Sodom. Listen, listen carefully. The men, not the ladies, the men saw those handsome men. See, when a man gets saved, I don't care, he can be ugly as both. Say amen. Amen. 
But when he gets saved, something about him looks good. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, if, you, if you don't believe that, you should see some of my pictures before I was saved. Amen. Praise God. I look at him sometimes and hide my own eyes. See me? But those men that had been sent from God, the angels, had a special appeal about them. Something about them made them look good. Say that. And the men of the city, those old gray faggots that had got mixed up in Sodom and Gomorrah. Read. But before they lay down, Listen. The, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round. Round. Both old and young. All the people from every quarter. Listen, you must be reading wrong. That's not in the Bible, can you? Come on, Brother Washington's saying bad things. My pastor never would say a thing like God. Both old and young, all the Both people. Both old faggots. Both old faggots and young faggots. The kind that is being raised up now to take over our country. The kind that's on parade want their rights. What rights? The only right that anyone has that's not right is the right to the tree of life. Say amen. Now, I want you to tell me something, some of you people that is a little more brilliant than me, I, I admit that I'm kind of dumb, but I, I believe God's word. Now, I want you to, the Bible said he created them male and female. Is that right? What is this other group? Where did they come from? He, God only made male and female. Is that what the Bible said? He made first Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. Now listen. That's why the devil wants to discredit the word of God. Because if you look in the word of God, every answer that is not answered is there. Every question that you don't understand so well. If you know, see, the devil don't want you to read the word. That's why so many Bibles is laying on the mouthpiece that got old and the pages are turned yellow. And when you turn them, they crumble all up. He don't want you to read the word because the Bible said such the scripture. For in them you think, you have eternal life. And then some people have even testified. I know I'm saved. But if you are saved, the Bible said, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. I love the Lord and doing all the things of the world. If you love him, you won't lie. You won't cheat. You won't backbite. You won't commit adultery. Young girls won't get pregnant before marriage. Oh, come on. Come on. But nowadays, young girls get pregnant just to get on welfare. And because nobody looks down on them. When I was a little boy, when a woman got, a young woman got pregnant, they didn't even mention it around the young children. They tell us not to have anything to do with that old girl. That's right. And when they talked about around us, they didn't say she was pregnant or she's going to have a baby. They talk over our head by saying she broke her leg. something. They say, what happened to such and such a girl down the street? They said, oh, she broke her leg. I said, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. My mother slapped me out. But in that day, there was a snap. 
standard even between people who was not saved. Even people who didn't confess to have nothing. They didn't want their daughters mixing with girls that would go out and lay up with men without being married to them. And now the mothers in, the, in, the, in these old lukewarm churches, honey, child, if he's a good man, you better be nice to him, you might lose him. Well, lose him then. Oh, my God. Read, my brother. And they called unto Lot. Yes. And said unto him. Yes. Where are the men which came into thee? These thee? are the old gray men and old gray boys. And those that act like women and, and men. They wanted to know from Lot. Where is those handsome men? That came in your house. Read. Bring them out unto us. Bring them out to us. What for? That we may know them. That don't mean that they want to shake their hands. Is that right? The Bible said that when, when Joseph took Mary, he did not know her. So they didn't want to just shake their hand and say, my name is Robert Blue. They wanted to get to know them with a possible yes. In the same manner, they would know women. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what the devil can do to a, a world when the sin is on the rampage. Sin is a reproach to any people, but righteousness exalts a nation. Read. And Lot went out the door. Listen unto, carefully. And Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after him. Yes. And said, I pray you, brethren. I beg you, brethren, read. Do not so wickedly. Don't do this wicked thing that you're trying to do. Behold now. Yes. I have two daughters which have not known man. I have two virtuous daughters who have kept themselves, who have not been whores all over the city. Amen. Who's not, who's not going around in, in, in elementary school with their pocket full of birth control pills. Like some of the young girls now. Lady came to me and said, a 12 year old. Got birth control pills in her pocket. What does she need with birth control? She don't need no birth control. All she need is Holy Ghost control. But I got two daughters of virtuous girls. Clean. Who never even known a man. I'll send them out to you. But don't bother the angels of the Lord. Oh my God. But then let me tell you something, when sin get in the, in, in the country and in the land, people don't care what they do, what they say, who they hurt. Women has got so brazen now, they'll call the lady up and say, your husband stays with me. Should be ashamed to let anybody know she's that stupid and that low to fool with somebody else's husband. Say that. But now they think it's a big deal to have somebody's husband. Some of you old men, old as ice water. It take. It take more than one woman for me. God 
have set those men down at the warn them. Listen, I warn you tonight. I warn you if you never hear my voice no more. I warn you, Jesus is coming soon. Do you hear what I say? Don't you see every sign? The Bible said what will be the... They can't, the, the, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, tell us what shall be the sign of your coming in the world. He said, take heed that no man deceive you. For nations shall, shall rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there shall be famines and pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. And all of these things is just the beginning of sorrow. When you hear these things, say, stand in the holy place. Glory to God, you still lying and cheating, backbiting and lying, breaking, breaking peace and raising confusion. And God is getting ready to come back here. Still playing church, going to church to fried chicken and make potato salad. You better get on your knees and start fasting and praying and say, Lord, help me to be ready. Say amen. Tonight, if I were you, I'd search my heart real carefully and I'll find out if I'm in the right place with God. And I wouldn't lie to myself another day. I don't care if I've been in the church 75 years. If you find out that you're not right, you get right tonight. Amen. God is sending me one place at a time, and I don't know why. Say amen. And every time I go someplace, I try to change my message, but God carried me right back to the same way. When Noah preached 120 years, he preached one subject, it's going to rain. The people got tired of hearing it, but he preached it's going to rain. People didn't want to believe it, but he preached it's going to rain. They said it's not going to rain because it never rained before. But Noah said it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight that God said he put a rainbow in the sky, a symbol of his peace. And he promised them one time, he said, no more water, but fire next time. You better get your business fixed. But Jesus said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. If I, if I were you tonight, and if I knew I wasn't ready, I wouldn't leave this place like I came. I'd get right with God. I lift my hand and say, Lord, 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 be merciful unto me, a sinner. Save my soul for eternity. Say it. Hallelujah. You're singing on the choir. You're working in the church. You're on the usher board. You're on the deacon board. You're on the boards. Well, get off the boards and get right with God. Stop fighting on who will be the president and give your life to Jesus. Jesus said in his word, said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Yeah! Yeah! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't think that God is going to send you a telegram. He told you what to look for. He said in the last days, he said men shall be lovers of themselves, high-minded, puffed up, proud, disobedient to parents, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, I know it in my spirit. I know that there is somebody here tonight will never get in another one of my revivals. I know it. I know it in my spirit. I know why God has me preaching this way. I was in Detroit. The church hadn't had no visitors. People was not even visiting. He said that they got to the place where no visitors came. The church stopped growing. And I looked at the church. And they were began to go towards being lifted up in pride. Oh my God, it's about everybody had them come back and put on their earrings, the sisters. They were going back to the makeup. And I said to him, I said, honey, do you want to see God move in this church? I said, every sister that want to see God move in this church, I said, stay. They stood. I said, if you really want to see God move, I said, take them earrings off. They reached up and started pulling them off. I heard from the pastor night before last, he said, Pastor Washington, he said, the church has never been the same. He said, the whole congregation comes out now to prayer.
They are preparing themselves now to meet us Thanksgiving Day in Washington, Washington, D.C. They believe God's word. The Bible said, if my people, whosoever come after me, let them first deny themselves. You want God to move, you got to move something. Say amen. The Bible said God hates a proud look. And when you get lifted up in pride, God can't stand to look at you. You saying come by here, Lord. He ain't coming by there until you come out of what you're in. Say amen. Tonight you're here. I want every one of you to bow your heads. Nobody watching nobody. Hallelujah. Jesus loved you so much that he raised me up from the gutter of Harlem. Got the, got the drugs out of me. The alcohol out of me and my system. Sit me on the pulpit to tell you that Jesus will. Jesus will. Jesus will. He'll do for you what you can't do for yourself. Glory to God. Right now, beloved, you might have been in the holiness church. People have sit in the holiness church and backslid. Everybody in my church where I pastor that is not saved. Say amen. But they have no excuse when they come before the Lord. Because I preach the word to them. Right now. With every head bowed. I want you to search your own heart. Hallelujah. The enemy sometimes will make you self-righteous. Will make you try to overlook. Try to make you shame. Make you feel as though somebody is. It's going to look at you and watch you. It's nobody's business. If somebody else could die for you, I could understand them having something to do with your salvation. But you must die for yourself. You must meet God for yourself. That's why you're supposed to seek your, or search your own self. The 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians said, Let a man examine himself. I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. The same word that I preached to you was preached to me and I heard it and obeyed. Right now, as your heads are bound, as the choir is singing softly, if you are here and know that you are not ready to meet God, I want you to stand right where you are. Just stand. Don't, don't look around. It's nobody's business. Just stand. God bless you, honey. Just remain standing. God bless you. God bless you, sweetheart. God bless you, young woman. God bless you. God bless you. This is a serious matter. You might have been in the church a long time. It's nobody's business. But you are searching out. You want to be right when you leave this place tonight. Hallelujah. Don't let nothing make you doubt. If, if something is saying to you to stand up, you stand up. Don't let the devil trick you. Can't nobody, nobody has no heaven or hell to put you in. Those same people will keep you from standing up admitting you are not right. And you will go home and know it. And the devil will tell you it's too late. If I were you, I'd stand right now. God bless you as you're standing all over the auditorium. That's right. Jesus loved you so much. He has sent me here to help you tonight. To let you know that he'll forgive you of anything you've done. Don't care how bad it is. God bless you. That's right. I don't care how long you've been in the church. Well, they thought I would say that's none of their business. This is between you and God. Hallelujah. They are standing now. Oh, bless the name of our God. Bless your son. Hallelujah. 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 Glory on the Abakut Yeleyaba. Henry Biasi. Oh, Jesus. Don't let nothing stop you. As you search your heart, just stand right up where you are. God bless you, honey. The Bible said, open confession is good for the soul. Amen. I will not lie to you. I'll tell you the truth. If I have to run out of this place back to New York, I'm going to tell the truth. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil trick you and you sit on your... The Bible said open confession. You know, when you lie, you can lie about your actions. You can sit there and know there's something wrong. But you see, this is a time to know for a certainty. The Bible said make your call and an election sure. You should know today if you die whether you're going to heaven or not. Don't let nobody tell you you'll never know till you get there. You will know if you abide in his word. If you do what God's saying in his word, you know you're not going to hell. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh God. Is there another one? We'll stand now before we get ready to pray for thee. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. 
Don't let nobody make you ashamed. Don't let nobody make you ashamed. If I had to listen to people, I wouldn't have got saved. Because people told me that I was a good boy. But I knew I wasn't. Hallelujah. You live with yourself. You know things about yourself that nobody knows but you. That's why the Bible said let a man examine himself. Hum it quiet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there another one before we pray? Yes. Don't be ashamed. The wisest step one can make is see himself or herself and say, I'm not going to hell. See, you only, you're the only one. Your mother can be a preacher. You can be born in the church pulpit. She can give birth there, but that don't make you saved. The only thing makes you saved when you confess your sin, repent of them, and ask Jesus to come into your life. Oh, bless the name of our God. Thank you, Jesus. If you're not sure about it, you stand. If you're not sure whether you're saved or not, that's time to stand because the Bible lets us know that we'll know when he touches. Sufficient is thy grace. They are yet standing. I'm going to pray in a few moments. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I come back to you. Yes, Lord. I come to you now. Yes, Lord. I'm waiting. There are others should be standing right now. Don't let the devil trick you. Don't let the devil trick you. He'll try to trick you. He'll try to make you feel ashamed of yourself. But you're doing the very best thing you could ever do. Regardless of the accomplishments you have made in life. They are nothing without Jesus. The Lord is here. Yes, Lord. Don't be ashamed. When I look at these young men and women walking up and down the streets with those big old radios playing and they're not ashamed of nothing. The devil wants us to be shamed, be quiet, don't say nothing about Jesus, don't let nobody know we love it. I'm waiting. There are others should be standing now before we pray. I'm waiting. Don't be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Down this aisle here. Glory to God. Choir, we need you tonight. 
all over down the aisle. Hallelujah. Glory. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I want them to turn their face, get on this wall and turn their face this way. And you get on that wall, turn your face this way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make a straight line. Don't gather up. And I want workers to stay with you. We need you to come around, choir, and come down these aisles, all down the aisle. I'm going to pray in a few minutes. Some of the ministers come over here. Come on down, Brother Bob. Come, come down this aisle. Hallelujah. I don't want one of these to go home not satisfied. Hallelujah. We still need some more to come along this aisle here. Praise God. To those of you that have stood up and wanted to make your call in the election sure tonight, I want you to know these people that's going to come, they just going to come just to pray with you to let you know that they are your friends and they want to see you make it. 